on a slightly related August favorites. So I am going to share a few things with you that I really enjoyed using during the month of August. And they are going to be a mix of watercolors, pencils, and a new medium that I have discovered. They're not new to the market, but they're new to me. And these are Holbein acrylic gouache. So um, some of these cards you would have seen across different hauls and things like that. I think um, August haul video, you'll see uh, these paints along with a lot more colors that I purchased. So if you wanted to see swatches of those, you're welcome to check that video out. I'll try to link it up here for you. I hope you're doing well. Today is actually the first day my son is going back to school, uh, went back to school and uh, it's been so peaceful and uh, my husband is in the um, in the office today, not upstairs but in the actual office, <laughs> which also is super super lovely and I've been working actually since I dropped my son off at school and I've been working for hours since. I just had a little lunch break and literally it feels like I am on a spa break just that peacefulness and the quietness in the house which is a, a rare thing to come by these days <laughs> so um let's start with watercolors what do we have we have got three colors here and i'm just thinking which order shall i swatch them in i think i fancy them in this order so I will go with the Schmincke Transparent Red Deep. So it's a beautiful, beautiful color. And um, yeah, I believe I actually bought it in the last haul. Jackson's Haul. So this is their 2017 release color. One of the 35 that have been added to the line. And I still need to film a video for you, which I'm going to do with all of my... Schmincke 2017 colors, which I have quite a few. And then we have Windsor Newton, A Rose and The Ray. This color I really, really enjoyed. And then I took a little break from it and I have gone back to using it now. It goes really quickly, this one. I wonder whether it's something to do with the formulation, but because it's a light color, it goes so fast. Um, when a color has more intensity like this one here, you don't need that much of it. But I find if, especially if I start mixing this uh, rose de ray with other colors for lovely um, kind of mixes, then it just goes really, really quickly. So the consistency of the paints are, I'd say, in terms of the thickness is this one would be like the thickest one then we have the schminke and this is the most soft and uh, they um, so this is the Jackson's neutral tint Jackson's watercolors they use honey in their colors which means that basically um, they don't fully dry when you squeeze them out they tend to have like the sanelier paints if you ever worked with them you know that if you squeeze them out onto your palette they will always remain sticky to the touch not necessarily will they sort of migrate and move around but definitely the stickiness will be there so you can see how super extremely pigmented this is and I'm losing a lot of pigment now washing the brush out because I want to have a bit of a gradient here so I'm just going to add a bit of water and just also for the transparency it's a beautiful beautiful red pink color in its deepest it looks super red and then it looks really pretty bubblegum type of a pink when it's sort of... Um, let me just get a little tissue here. So I'm just going to actually lift a little bit of the pigment here. Now we have Rose de Ray and you'll see a difference here. It's a very light pigment. It's quite sort of creamy. Inconsistency, 
very different and unfortunately I have a little dot of the dark color here so I'm just going to try and lift it if I can otherwise oh no it's quite um, potent this one so I don't think I can lift it I'll just go over it so this is a warm toned pink and it behaves very different because it's a different manufacturer and then neutral tint also super pigmented at its darkest at its um, thickest You'll notice that my color palette is sort of like a pinky gray for the August month. So I recently purchased the Schminke neutral tint and in comparison, uh, purely because of my color choices and, you know, how I like my neutral tint to look, I prefer this. It's not as purple, it doesn't have as much violet in there, but it all depends on your own taste. Okay, so those are the watercolors. Now let's maybe do the pencils and then we'll come back to the acrylics. So here is a little trio which I love always loved using these two together and then I now discovered that this makes a beautiful midpoint color and if you blend them together it really is lovely so I'll just swatch them on their own so this is if I haven't mentioned it's the luminance by Karen Nash and this the color is dark indigo then we have Payne's Grey 30%. I have been using this three or four of my illustrations. Now the white you're not going to see very well, but it is a pink white. With luminance, I always like to use a brush because they do crumble a lot. But, having said that, I haven't found another pencil that would blend as nicely or layer as nicely as luminance that do. So I quite like also the Derwent Light Fast. So when it comes to layering, they don't layer as well, whereas these ones, they really truly create some magic. So I'll show you here as an example. So here is our dark indigo and then I will apply the grey when they mix with one another it's like butter So basically you get this beautiful gradient and it really works nicely. So then I'm going to move on to the gouache. So before I go and wash the um, water jar out and get some fresh water, I thought uh, some of you might want to see the Schminke neutral tint. And let's just look at the pigments, PR122, PB, gosh, it's so tiny. I think it says PB60 and PBK7. 
and on the Jacksons we have PBK7, PB60 and 208. Something has been written over the printed. I think the printed number is 9 and I think they wrote down 8 if I'm not mistaken. So basically uh, the PBK7 and the PB60 are the same, it's just the PR1 to tune here in the Schmincke and PR208 in this one. So they, they changed up the red pigment and that is probably why it has more of a violet color to it. Nothing wrong with it. This, uh, you know, it's a beautiful color. It's just I prefer it more, more gray like that. So there you go. That's the schmink is one, as you can see. It's more of a kind of aubergine skin type of a color, and it's definitely warmer. And this one is a cooler. So now let's move on to the acrylic gouache. Now I have really heavily used acrylic gouache. Not all of the colors that I bought, but um, definitely some of them have become favorites. And I'll just show you a few. So here, for instance, this is the dark red here, which is the wine red. And I think it's just so beautiful on its own. But when you start adding a little bit of white to it, it goes into these beautiful pinks. So it's a gorgeous color for sure. Um, then recently I have used, so let's see, it's not in this sketchbook. Just trying to think where I did it. Oh, I think it's in this sketchbook here. I'll just show you a couple more colors in examples. So here I have used this beautiful fuchsia, which is primary magenta. And it's gorgeous. I mean, look at this matte pop of color that you get. It's just so beautiful. And then this color here, I'll come back to you, but since I am in this sketchbook, I actually quite like this combination of this gray, which is a misty blue. It's like a bluey gray color. And I'll be honest with you, I haven't used this color in my face illustrations. I kind of had an idea of using this color in, in sort of outfits, dresses or swimsuits, things like that, but I haven't yet. But what I thought it would be great is just create small um, elements, small patterns on dark backgrounds for the outfits. And this is just a little play here that I did. Um, but you can see how these two colors really look good together. They kind of pop because it's not really a white, yet it's bright enough to really stand out like a white one would do, but it has a nice bluey gray type of a color to it. So um, I thought I'll include it today and certainly swatch it out for you. And then let's see, what else did we have here? By the way, if you're watching new, then uh, this this part here that I showed you, this was from my two brand new stamp sets, the Color Theory and Moving a Doll, which are available now, hopefully still available um, on Etsy, Alona Creates, if they haven't sold out yet. Okay, so what else do we have? Oh yeah, this color here. So. This color, coral red, is really pretty on its own. However, it is the most perfect and gorgeous corally peach um, color for a blush, especially on like olive skin or darker skin tones or warm skin tones, quite sort of deep skin tones, not pale skin tones. This is just so, so gorgeous. I hope the um, K7 
camera can make it justice. Uh, but in real life, it is just stunning. So I would highly, highly recommend to adding this color for a blush if you are into this sort of face illustration style. Otherwise, florals would be great as well. Okay, so let me swatch these out for you. And I'm going to use a flat brush to do that with. I painted my nails for the first time since we came back from um, Virginia water. <laughs> and uh, it's been nice. It's been very nice. I have so much space and every time I just kind of put these swatches way close together but anyway it is done what is done and it's misty blue at the end okay So, acrylic gouache, again, if you haven't watched my whole video for August, um, I will just basically explain that the difference between this gouache and other gouache, which I, actually, this is my first experience, but I'm telling you what I have learned, is that you can use this like a regular gouache, but... Once it dries, it dries permanently. Gouache does not. Gouache is a water-soluble paint, which means that it sort of paints like watercolor, but quite opaque. Um, but with this gouache, it dries permanent, which means that you can go over the top with it and it wouldn't move. So you could go with a wet medium over the top if you wanted, or you could go with... Um, like, I don't know, wet medium probably wouldn't be a good idea, but what would be a good idea is something like oil sticks or uh, fine gel pans, so they wouldn't get clogged up on this. They would just glide, whereas gouache, uh, it could pick up and get stuck in the nib of the pan. Um, so that's the difference. It's also super, super matte once it dries. So I love using these colors for lipsticks and these paints rather and things like that. I also love building up like two or three layers for a lipstick because I think that it just looks, it starts to really pop because it's matte and because the color intensity is really beautiful. So there you go. That's the wine red and let's make sure there's no pink left in my brush here is the misty blue a very pretty alternative to a white white can look sometimes a bit out of place or a little bit too harsh so when a white is tinted, like the pink white here, it just looks gorgeous. There we go. And this is obviously a blue rather than a pink. But you can see this color is in between those two somewhere here. So I'm just going to title them quickly and give you a close-up. And that will be it.